obviously England uh, back in uh, back in white ball action, uh, back in action for the first time obviously um, since the triumphant uh, Pakistan. No, I've done it again. I'm forgetting about that weird little series we had in Australia because I think my mind's just we don't want to remember that. We don't want to remember that. That didn't happen. It didn't <laughs> no. exist. No. Um, but yeah, so um, Peter, are you uh, you pleased that um, that we're back, back in action? Yeah, I am. Um, do you know what? When, uh, there's been a lot of there's been as you, like you said, there's been a lot of cricket, and I'm not just talking about the franchise stuff, which I know will come up in conversation as we're talking through the squad. But there's, there's been um, New Zealand played a test series in Pakistan. New Zealand are in India at the moment, getting spanked by the looks of things. Um, then Australia have had. Did Australia have tests? Maybe, probably. Um, there's been Zimbabwe cricket versus Ireland. Um, also on that on that front, I'm going to go way off piece here. Uh, Josh Little ended up in the men's one day uh, best eleven. I think it was one day. It was either it's either one day or T20, and like that's absolutely huge. It's absolutely huge for Irish cricket to have someone from Ireland in the men's eleven. Um, but anyway, so England, England have not played cricket in what feels like forever, but there's been lots of other international cricket. So it's been, it's, it's good to have England back now. Um, and from here on in, such as, such as life as a, as a cricketer playing for England, uh, they're pretty much here nonstop now until, well, until the ashes really. Uh, and then indeed for the whiteboard team for the world cup. Um, so it's a uh, it's a start of, of of good times. Good times may lay ahead, and hopefully, because of the return of a particularly special uh, individual for the England team and someone that has got a lot of history already, despite the fact that they've a not played that much cricket for England in a while and b only made their debut in 2019, um, it's good to have them back. And of course, I think people will know who I'm talking about, even if they uh, even if I haven't said his name. And that, of course, is. So I just keep pausing. Just keep keep lengthening it out. <laughs> it's Joffrey Archer. Joffrey Archer is back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and Paddy, I mean, what were your thoughts? Did, did you first of all did you watch him when he came back for his uh, SA twenty side, or are you just waiting for him to be for England? Uh, yeah, I did do catch from that. Um, I think it was just. <laughs> to be honest, like I was kind of, it was one obviously such a relief to have him back in in the team. But I don't know what it is it was like. I feel like because he's been out for that long, I was just sort of like, I was just willing him to get through each delivery because I just, the last thing I wanted was to see him like break down, and then just think like not again, like not again because we know that he's had, you know, he, he's had setbacks before. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure with when when we were last in the West Indies, he was kind of like not in the squad, but he was like around the camp and, you know, he was kind of bowling a bit and it looked like he was, you know, we were kind of maybe going to see his return last summer. And then, you know, he had, he had a setback and then obviously, you know, we didn't see him for the whole of 2022. Um, but, you know, I mean, to, to have him back, you know, I mean, it was obviously it would have been great for him to get back playing sort of, you know, competitive cricket. And obviously now he's, he's got that call up and, um, yeah, he's you know he's part of a what I think's a very strong squad. We're taking over to to uh, South Africa. Um, did you catch his performances? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the his first his first over I think was a wicket maiden, um, uh, which it's not bad. I've heard it's pretty good, especially in in spe- especially in T twenties, uh, especially when you open the bowling in T twenties as well. Um, so it's good to see him back. It's good to see him back bowling at pace. He did miss it. He's missed a couple of games in the middle section of the of the series so far. Um, but I wonder whether it's more so to do with making sure that he can play as many games as possible rather than him having a recurring injury. Um, you were right. You were right about the, the the him coming back over the summer. That was a real shame because you know he's been building himself back up, and it happens. It happens with quite a lot quite a lot of fast bowlers I think you know it happened with um uh Mahmood I think as well where you where you are injured and then you are trying to build yourself up 
and you get a stress fracture or something similar. I think Ollie Stone was similar too. Um, and Ollie Stone's back in the SA20 as well, looking great. Um, so all these fast bowlers that England have got, hopefully, I mean, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll start to see them return over this, over this, over this year because it looked, it looked like we had a big bowl of potential in, in terms of our quicks. Um, and, you know, we've had to, as much as Mark Wood is excellent, um, or as, as the, I don't know if you saw this at the weekend, as the boxing put Mark Wood as Johnny Bairstow. Um, if you haven't seen that, guys, just go on. I, I, I saw this live. To be fair, Johnny Bairstow had been on the TV about 30 seconds before they cut to Mark Wood and then they pop it up as Johnny Bairstow. So, yeah, I, I, I forgive him a little bit. Anyway, yeah, we had, um, we've, uh, We've been very blessed with uh, a new pool of quicks, but also very cursed by the fact that they got injured all sort of together at the same time. And we've had to rely on a pretty injury prone Mark Wood. Um, but hopefully 2023 sees a lot of their return, um, which kind of builds on to really like the, the, the squad, I suppose. So uh, shall I read the squad for anyone that doesn't know it? Mm. Shall, I, shall I do it? Go for it, yeah. All right. So, uh, England squad to face uh, South Africa over these three men's one-day internationals is Joss Butler as captain, Moen Ali, Joffre Archer, Harry Brook, Sam Curran, Ben Duckett, David Milan, Adil Rashid, Jason Roy, Phil Salt, Ollie Stone, Reese Topley, David Willey, and Chris Wokes. Um, thoughts, Clay? What are your thoughts on the squad? Um, yeah, nice and strong. Um, plenty of options um, in pretty much well all the positions really um all down the order um i think especially you know we've been talking about there about like this this pool of quicks what we have to choose from and i think that i mean that squad is kind of a, a prime example of that you know i mean you've got stone topley willie walks archer and current you know who like anything from a sort of a medium fast to, to fast um, and i think to you know it I think we're going to see in this in this series, you know, and obviously probably there are other kind of one day um, one day matches like in the lead to the World Cup where I think there's going to be quite a sort of rotation of, of the quicks. Um, obviously, one to to get their kind of match fitness up and you know, to keep their make sure everybody's kind of like keeping their eye in, but also just like to I guess to try and figure out like what the best kind of combination is and you know what what the best to yeah, like the best sort of, you know, the best group, like leading group of uh, quicks to take to the World Cup and to maybe start that opening World Cup game. You know what I mean? But we've got a lot of white ball cricket before them. Um, I think obviously, you know, this series is the first of many sort of of white ball games before then. Um, but no, I mean, it's a it's a really strong squad. Um, I think I'm quite interested to see how Jason Roy fares. Because obviously, you know, the big kind of like one of the big lines from basically most of last year was how, you know, Jason Roy just, for all that we know he can do, he just, he just couldn't get going for pretty much the whole of whole of the year. And, you know, that ultimately led to him losing his spot in the team. And, you know, you look at the how successful that white ball team was, you kind of think, you know, is he going to get his chance to get back in? Obviously, you know, he's, he's been picked in the squad now. He's, he's in and around us. You know, this is a huge, potentially huge opportunity. And I don't want to go as far to say as like a career saving opportunity. But if you think about it, if he doesn't get like any decent scores in South Africa, then the selectors are going to kind of say like, we're not at a point now where it's like, there's nobody else could replace him because we know that there is. And I think now that, you know, we know we've sort of identified those players, um, it's going to be, yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of pressure on Roy. Um, and I think it's going to be interesting to see how he, how he deals with that and if he can come back from South Africa with uh, any runs under his belt. I don't know if you're, you're in the same, same camp with Jason Roy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, um, I, I, the only thing I disagree with you on is that I would say it probably is career saving. I would, I would, I would go as far as saying that it is. Um, 
because twofold really um well, maybe threefold one he's still he's still not really going that well at the moment like you mentioned about sort of the end of the year and and then the hundred as well the hundred at times he looked like he was he just didn't want to be there um but that still hasn't that hasn't gone away he's he's at the other end with Joss Butler in the Power Royals at the moment and and Joss Butler is the leading run scorer in the in this in the whole series and Jason Roy just can't get going and again yeah you're right is that no one no one's denying and no one is denying that he has had the history and he has all of the, the a lot of history in the bank to to rely on and no one's outing his talent it's just it's just where is he almost a question of where it's gone and with the amount of talent that's out there available so this is points two and three uh, which i'll say in a second is that um i think the ecb and the selectors and matthew mott can be quite cutthroat and just say look you know you've you've had your time but we've got players in the wings and um as much as jason roy has given a lot to england maybe he's got to go find himself again um, with sorry. And it's almost like, I've, not, it's not exactly the same as Liam Plunkett because Liam Plunkett lost his place in the side almost straight after the World Cup. But it's, a, it's that kind of thing is that Liam Plunkett um, was keeping the, the, his place um, or if he had kept his place for a long time afterwards, perhaps it would have been just because he was in that World Cup team. Is it the same now with Jason Roy? Is he is he still in the in the in the squad because he won the World Cup? I don't know. Anyway, so points two and three, which kind of is is moving on to our next point of what we discussed or put on our put on our plan. We don't just come up with this on the spot. Uh, City pointers, yeah. listen. It, it might it might seem like stuff. <laughs> yeah, it may seem off the cusp and uh, at times pretty random but believe me there is some plan there is some plan and the next part of this plan was just saying that any any sort of inclusions that were surprises or people that were not included that were surprises um and it comes on to points two or three of jason roy's downfall is that there's uh will jacks and there's the rehabilitated alex hales both of them playing great cricket at the moment. Alex Hales, I think, is the leading run scorer in the IL20. And Will Jacks is um, the second highest run scorer behind uh, Joss Butler in the SA20. So um, the fact that two people who open the batting are, uh, are potentially there, ready-made to go straight into this team I think is a real concern. If I'd be really concerned if I was Jason Roy, and to an extent, even Ben Duckett and Harry Brook, who could easily open. Like, like I think I think he really is looking over, or should be if he's not looking over his shoulder. Um, is there anyone that you think that think is a surprise, apart, or maybe anyone else that might be void of their place, or um, perhaps should be in the squad? Do you think? Um, I mean, in terms of the like who were taken out there, um, not so much like anybody who's maybe having to fight for their place, but like what I said earlier, just the fact that I think it's going to come down to the the quicks. I think I feel like they're going to have because there's so many of them, and if there is like this rotation, you know what the what like the you know the the hierarchy go for. I feel like there's just going to be so much pressure on, like, you know, if, if they're picked in that first game, then they're going to be thinking, right, well, I've got to impress because there's, there's like, a lot of lads who are, like, breathing down my neck. And, you know, even if I play well, like, I might be out the next game if I am rotated. And, you know, I've got to, like, I've really got to make it count sort of in this in the moment sort of thing. Um, so I think, you know, there's nobody, obviously, I think, in terms of the bowlers, especially, I think everybody's there, you know, on on merit. You know, we know what they can all do. Um, for me, you know, if you're looking at players who might be really, I don't really, I, I don't really feel like I can really single anybody out to be honest, because I just feel like there's just sort of collective where, sort of whoever, yeah, whoever does 
miss out in that first game and probably like will not be too disappointed because I might be thinking, you know, I'm going to get my opportunity because you know, the, knowing that there's a World Cup coming up and knowing that there's plenty of cricket to play. Um, but yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see who does sort of who gets given the nod um, for that first game because you know, like we've been saying, there's just there's so much there's so many options there, you know, and um, but to be honest, I mean with you look at that squad and it's very strong and then you think of the players who aren't there and you think like, you know, we've mentioned this before, but the, the depth of that white ball squad is just yeah. it's phenomenal. You know, I mean, there's, you know, you mentioned there about, you know, how many runs like Hales and Jackson Butler have got in the, the franchise tournaments and, you know, I mean, obviously Butler's, Butler's going to come in, you know, in, in really good form um, and then, you know, you've got like you've got the other two who had who had really good like ends of twenty twenty two and they've you know started twenty twenty three like a house on fire. Um but yeah, it's just you look at the players we haven't got in there and it's it's brilliant. But in terms of the squad who's out there, um I'm I'm pretty happy. Um you know, it's gonna be a case of yeah, just make making new opportunities count because you don't know sort of when you'll next uh, be given a nod, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, it's this, that's right. I mean, like, I was just sort of just thinking there, the people that aren't in, like, um, I mean, we know Ben Stokes is retired, but if Ben Stokes wasn't retired, he'd probably be there. Joe Root has been given permission to stay in the IL-20. I mean, he'd probably be in that squad. If, if, it's, if, you, if it's a World Cup squad and you've not got Joe Root in your team, you, you'd probably question that quite a lot. Um, I mean, Sam Billings has played a lot for England. James Vince is going well in the IL20. He's played a lot recently for England. So there's there's masses of potential to bring other people in. Mark, I mean, Mark Wood's not in that squad as well. Um, and I guess that he is just being protected because there's there's Bangladesh um, uh, one day as in T20s coming up, and and of course the Test series at the end of February. So yeah, I guess he's been protected. Um, and I, yeah, I, 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 so with that in mind, I think there's, I think David Willey maybe might think, might be thinking that, you know, he has got to really prove himself because of course, Jofra was the person that effectively took his place in the World Cup squad just gone. And, you know, I, I, I guess there's people like Reese Topley that would love to go and prove himself because he was, he looked in such good nick going into the World Cup, T, the T20 World Cup. In Australia, and then he obviously got injured. Um, Phil Salt, I think, has got um, a good op- opportunity to mark in his uh, his territory at, at the top. And um, do you know what's what? I th- do you know what's been interesting watching some of this S- SA20? And it'll be interesting to see what happens because it's in South Africa. Is that Adil Rashid has not been whether he's just been badly picked because he he's been coming on in the in the in the in the power play and he's been coming on late in the, in the game, whether Adil Rashid is, is, um, you know, not the person that he used to be in, in the short, short format, because he's been getting picked quite a lot. When, when Marco Janssen um, and his co have, have, have got going, he's, um, he's not, he's, 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 he's shipped runs. He's taken wickets, but he's shipped runs. So it'll be really, I'm, I'm curious about Adil Rashid. I want him to keep going. I want him to do well because he's been so good for England. It's interesting that in South Africa, where obviously this one day series is going to be, he's been, um, he's been, in, he, he's not been, he's not been tight, I think is the word that I'd be looking for. Um, is there anyone that really stands out for you that you would, you would really be wanting to see? Like who's who's the man that you'd be like? Yeah, this person is exciting, and you're not allowed to say Jofra because everyone will say Jofra. <laughs> uh, I mean, hmm. probably probably based off like the performances, you know, at the end of last year. Um, probably Harry Brook. Um, you know, he was just. I think we, you know we've known for a long time that Brook is a very very good batsman and I think you know there was a lot of time where you know there was a lot of talk about around like he was basically like you know just really carrying the water and like you know when when Bear still was kind of fitting firing you know he could have sort of forgiven him for thinking like 
you know, how the how the hell am I going to get in this team whilst like <laughs> whilst this middle order are kind of fitly firing? Oh, um, that's a point. Johnny Bairstow's injured. You just reminded me of someone else that would be playing. Yep. Yeah. That's it's insane that yeah. that's you've got that strong of a squad with those names including Johnny Bairstow not there. <laughs> um, but um, no, I mean, no, I think. I, I think everyone has very high hopes for, for Brooke. I think there was a lot of pressure put on him, like as a almost like a like for like replacement for um Johnny Bairstow. And you know, I mean, he came into the team and he was just phenomenal. Um so yeah, I just I, whenever I see him playing for England, um I'm always pretty excited to watch him play. And yeah, in this series it, it won't be any different to be honest. Um I'm a I'm a big fan of his. I think he's a very he's very aggressive without being too reckless, which I think you know, when you're coming in in the middle order is sort of a very, it's a very good mindset to have because obviously, you know, he may want to come in and, you know, just go sort of go down swinging. But if there's been a few early wickets, you can't always do that. Um, but, you know, he's kind of shown that he can stick around for a bit, you know, settle things down and then put his foot down, which, you know, it's just, again, it's what you want in your sort of middle order factors, really. Um, so, yeah. If I had to pick anybody from that squad, and obviously I'm not allowed to pick Archer, um, <laughs> it would be, um, yeah, it would be Harry Brook, I think. What about you? Who was not for Archer? Uh, yeah, I would have said Harry as well. Um, I agree that the shots, the shots that he plays, um, he almost takes the element of risk and danger out, but he's still attacking. Um, he's an exceptional cricketer. I'm, 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 I have real high hopes for him in 2023. Um, but uh, to be different, because you said Harry Brook, um, I think Ben Duckett had a great start to start to his uh, well, actually not start to it because he's already been part of the England setup. Uh, he's had a he had a good reintroduction to the to the England setup. He was good in Pakistan, both in the short form and the Test circuit. Um, and Ollie Stone, I like Ollie Stone. I hope he does well. And you know he's he he looks like he's got a decent action. He can throw the bat a little bit as well at the bottom. So I think I'd say Ollie Stone as well. 